प्रकया चक्षुरमृत नमाम विष्णुपदाचार्य सिंह रूपने श्री श्रीमद्भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चत्यादेश शक्ति विग्रहाय नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्री मोताय दीन तारिणी रूपानुगा विरोधा
Oh, 
Prophet pronounced to our Gurudev, Om Vishnu Padu Dandi Swami Sivakti Vedam, Narayan Gosai Maharaj, also Ashik Shigurus, Shigor Govinda Maharaj, Shivak Vedam, Madhusudan Gosai Maharaj, all Vaishnavas, all devotees, thank you for coming. So tonight's class is the goal of Kirtan. Because unless our goal is fixed, we cannot reach the destination. And if we fix some improper places our destination, <laughs> that's even worse. Right? So, sadhana sadhati iti cha krishna prem iti sad. Who is sadhu? Who knows the goal of life? And who can teach us how to reach it? That is called sadhu, saintly person. So Sadam Bina Sadaj Sadyavastu Keho Nahi. And Chaitanya Chara Britain said. If our goal is not fixed, then we cannot adopt the proper process, the proper sadam. What's your name, lady, with the blonde hair? Kiri. Kiri. Yeah. Do you know the two words, sadam and sadhya? Have you heard of them? Sadam and sadhya. No. Okay, you can get a tattoo. Sadam and sadhya. <laughs> sadhya means the goal. And sadhan, the means by which the goal, the means by how I approach the goal, how I attain the goal. If my goal is not eating, if my goal is the community camp center at six o'clock, <laughs> that's my goal. If I don't know my goal, I cannot reach it. And if I do not adopt the proper process, I cannot reach it also. So two things are there. So without the proper process, you cannot reach the goal. So what is the goal? What is the goal of life? Many people think we should just practice and anyhow when we get self-realization then we'll understand it. No, it's too late then. No. One should understand the goal of life before one begins practice. Otherwise how he can set his mind on the attainment of one goal. Okay. So. These days because people refuse to take any guidance from proper scriptures, you know, the Vedic scriptures. And also maybe because many people have falsely represented the Vedic teachings, that also can be there. For whatever reason, great sadness, people have lost faith in the bona fide scriptures and the concept of Guru. You know. Therefore Lord Shiva said, Tasmad Guru Prabhatiya Taki Gasa Shri Uttama Shabde Parameneshnatam Brahmani Upasamasvaya Lord Shiva said, Tasman Guru Prabhagita, therefore you must go to Guru. Why? And you should ask him only one question. Gigyasa Shre Uttama. What is the best thing for me? <laughs> what is the best thing for everyone? The problem is we have no experience of the best thing. But proper Guru, proper saintly person, they have full experience of that. So only one question is there to Guru. Guru, no sub Tasma Guru Prabhupati Deki Gyasa Shiltama, Sabde Padanijan Snata. They should be expert in Sabda. Kitam means sound, right? Kitam, Sabda. Sabda Padanishnatam. They should be expert in all type of sound. Sound also means here scriptures. And Brahmanu Pasamasaya. They should have direct experience of Parabrahma, the absolute truth. So Kitam. Kirtan means Parambhijaya teaches to Krishna Sankirtan. Many type of Kirtan is there. Like many people at the football match, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. This is one type of Kirtan, right? Everyone chanting with one idea, one focus. <laughs> what else? The Australian National Anthem. This is also one type of Kirtan. But the goal of these is some dubious destination. <laughs> Australia beat England in the football. 
Australia win the gold medal, but these also one type of kirtan. But this, by this type of kirtan, one cannot achieve the goal of life. So, and the best type of kirtan is Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Means loudly chanting the names, forms, qualities, and pastimes of Krishna. That is the goal. The mind should be fixed on that. And scriptures, the Vedic scriptures, again and again and again repeat. Of all type of meditation, which is the best, the Rig Veda describes. Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Parasada Pasyanti Surya Divya Chakshu Satatam. Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Pada Rig Veda is considered the first of the Veda, the first of the four Vedas. And it says very clearly, Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Pada. Om. Om is the sound incarnation of Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Pranava Sarva Vedishu. In all the Vedas, I am Prana. Prana means Omkar. So Omkar is Krishna himself. Many people chanting Om, Om, Om. <laughs> but because they do not know the actual meaning of Om, they cannot achieve the goal of life. So the scriptures describe all these things very nicely. A, U, Ma, three syllables. A, Iti, Akshara, Krishna, Sarva, Vaikuntha, Nayaka. Krishna. A. The syllable A in Om means Krishna. No? A iti akshara. Akshara means syllable. A iti akshara Krishna. The syllable A indicates Krishna. Who is he? Sarva Vaikuntha Nayaka. He is the Lord of the, all the spiritual worlds. No? This is the material world. But the Lord of the spiritual world, who is he? That is Krishna. No? U iti Radharaha. U is Krishna's. Pleasure giving potency. Right? You always see Krishna with who? Radha. Who is Radha? No, what's your name, madam, with the glasses? Jennifer. Jennifer. You know who Radharani is? No, I don't. Any picture of Krishna, he's always with a very beautiful lady on his side. Who is that? Radha. Radharani. Who is she? She is the Ladini Shakti. Ladini Shakti means that energy which always gives happiness to Krishna. <laughs> Therefore, we never see any picture of Krishna alone. Never see. Always he's with his mother and father, Nanda Yasoda. Or with cows, generic picture of Krishna with the cows. But most, 99% of pictures always have Krishna with Radhika. Because you cannot have the sun without the sunlight. Right? Impossible. Those who only worship Krishna, no, they're like the person who wants the sun without the sunlight. So Krishna is the sun. He is Shaktiman. Shaktiman means the source of all energy, the possessor of energy. And Shakti means energy. Energy always has a source. Energy always has a cause. So God cannot be an energy. God means energetic, the source of energy. So the supreme energetic is Krishna. <laughs> so Krishna never alone, always with his energy. Like without sunlight, you cannot see the sun. Right? There is no ident identity of the sun without sunlight. Can you have a fire without heat and light? Impossible. Right? So Krishna means with his energy. Okay. So A U U means Radha. Like we chant Hare Krishna, Radhe Krishna. So A Iti Akshara Krishna Sarva Vaikun U Iti Radha Sabla Dini Nayaka. So his U means Radha, his pleasure giving potency, and Ma, that is us, the individual souls. So the individual soul service to Radha Krishna, <laughs> and that is Om, Prana Sarva Vedishu. So Rig Veda clearly says Om Tat, Tat again and again, Om Tat Sat people say. Tat means absolute truth. Om Tat. Who is that absolute truth? Vishnu. 
No? Vishnu is another name of Krishna. Many people say Vishnu and Krishna are two, no, not two separate. Vishnu means one who pervades everything. That is Vishnu. Krishna and Vishnu are the same. So, Om Tad Vishnu, Padamam Padam. No? The lotus feet of Lord Vishnu, of Lord Krishna, is always meditated upon by the liberated souls. Om Tad Vishnu, Paramam Sadapasyanti Sura. Sura means the liberated souls, the saintly persons. They call devas, demigods. No? Om Tad Vishnu, Paramam Sadapasyanti Sura. The suras, the liberated souls, the perfected souls, always see. No? <laughs> so liberated souls means many. Many people say when we become liberated, we merge and become one. But no, you've got this sutra, the mantra, clearly says liberated souls, surayo, that is plural. So the liberated souls, of which there are many, 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 always meditate on the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Parasada Pasyantis Vipya Chakshu Satitam. And how they see him? They see him with divine vision. Of course, now our eyes are material, and Krishna is not material, therefore we cannot see him. <laughs> Even though he is everywhere and in everything, we have never seen him once. Why? No proper qualification. So, in this verse is many, many things. Again and again the Vedas describe, if you want to meditate on something, you should meditate on the lotus feet of Krishna. These days, many people are fond of chanting the Brahman. You know the Gayatri? Right? These days, people are very fond of chanting Gayatri. No? But actually, the ladies should not chant Gayatri. You know that? <laughs> Guru Maharaj says, Gayatri, three means triatri. By chanting it, you become delivered. Delivered from what? False ego. And the false ego is what? I am the enjoyer. That is the false ego. We are not the enjoyers, we are servants. So Guru Dev would say, you know, men should chant Gayatri. Why? Man have too much false ego. Too much. I am the enjoyer, I am the collector, I am the enjoyer. Do what I say, I am the control. Man have very strong that disease. But ladies do not have that problem. Therefore, like in the house, who is doing all this, the service? Who is taking care of everyone? That is the mothers. The ladies. The ladies have a natural mood of service. So if men chant the Gayatri, what happens? Their false ego of being the false enjoyer, exploited, that is broken and destroyed. Then you become liberated. But if ladies chant that, they have, therefore the Gayatri mantra is never to be chanted by ladies because that problem they don't have. So if ladies chant the Gayatri, what happens to them? That good thing is lost. <laughs> and that Ego being man and exploited, that bad mood comes. Therefore, we see Gayatri should never be chanted by ladies. No need. Because different people have different types of diseases. Man have one disease. <laughs> so, but the Gayatri is considered the mother. Two mothers we have. The Vedas, the Vedic scriptures, and the Gayatri. These are two mothers. Mother tells you who is your father. Your name again? Jenny, right? Carrie. Carrie. So, Carrie. What's your father's name? Um, well, I've had four, so my okay. biological father is Bruce. How do you know he's your biological father? Mm. Yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who placed us in the womb of our mothers, we cannot see. We could not see at that time. So, if we want to know who is our father, we have to approach the authority, and the authority is our mother. One time, our Gurudev's Gurudev was on the train in India. And ticket collector came. Swami, where are you going? We are going Vrindavan. That is the birthplace of Krishna. The ticket collector said, I do not believe in any Vishnu's mission. <laughs> he said, I do not believe in any God. Why? Seeing is believing. If I cannot see, why should I believe? Then our Gurudev's Gurudev. We say, Param Gurudev. He said, that is not true. Many things you believe which you have never seen. Like what? Who is your father? <laughs> Ticket collector knew what was coming, no? so he began to cry. No, no, I believe in God, Swamiji. I believe in God. But how we know who is our father? Mother tells us. So we have two mothers. One is the Gayatri, 
and one is the Veda, Veda Mata. The Vedic scriptures also one mother. So the Vedic scriptures say only one thing again and again. Meditate on Satyam Param Dimihi, the Brahma Gayatri says. Satyam Param Dimihi. Dimihi means to meditate. And Satya Param, that supreme, absolute truth. So I don't want to explain the Brahma Gayatri, but there is clear mention of Krishna also and his energy. Om Burhuva Swata. Tat means absolute truth. Where is that absolute truth? Om. That is Krishna already we explained. So with Burhuva Swa, now we are Burvalok. You know, seven planetary systems in the universe. We are Bulok, the middle planetary system, Earth. Bhuvaha, Swa, Tat. These are the higher planetary systems. So where is that absolute truth? He is beyond all the material universe on Tad Vishnu Tad Savito Baranyam you should worship him no? therefore the idea I merge with him that is not there in the Brahma God because if you become God how can you worship him <laughs> if you merge your existence with the absolute truth how can you adore him how can you love him love means to no? so very very subtle things so the Brahma Gayatri, these people chanting Brahma Gayatri, I want to merge with God, but that is the complete wrong meaning of the Gayatri. If you, if you become God, who will sing the Gayatri? Finished. If you become God, how can you serve Him? How can you worship Him? Destroy it. Love these two. No. So all these things also in the Gayatri mantras. No. Therefore, Bargo Devashi. No. You should worship Him. No. Bargo also means energy. Krishna with his energy, you should worship them. So the absolute truth is Krishna and Radhika. Krishna and his potency. Krishna and his power. You know? These days many people are teaching us, when you meditate, you meditate on the breath. But breath is a material thing. Why meditate on breath? The inflow and outflow of carbon dioxide. Why would you meditate and think of that thing? At the time of death, you cannot breathe. How you meditate on breath at that time? But these days, many people are teaching many, many unauthorized systems of meditation. Meditate on a candlelight, or, or meditate on the sound of the gong, or <laughs> meditate on one hand clapping. Many, many unauthorized processes of meditation people are teaching. In this way, adeya tandi upaniyamana, like a blind, Leading the blind. If we should not be blind, we should have two eyes. <laughs> so the Vedas have two divisions, the Shruti and the Smriti. These are considered like two eyes. Shruti means, Shruti, that which is spoken by God, by Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vedas chaham aham eva vedyo vedanta krit veda krit eva chaham. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the speaker of the Vedas, I am the goal of the Veda, and by all the Vedas, only I am understood. So, what Krishna directly speaks, that is called Shruti. Shruti means that which is heard. And that which is revealed in the heart of great personalities, this is called Smriti. But Shruti and Smriti, this is like a relation between fruit and tree. <laughs> No tree, no fruit. There's relationship there. Have you heard of Mahabharat? Mahabharat is made by, manifested by Vyasadev. So this is one type of Smriti. Have you heard of Ramayan? Yeah. Ramayan manifested by Valmiki. So Valmiki also this, Ramayan also one type of, this is Smriti Shastra. But Shruti, the four Vedas, and Smriti, <laughs> these both giving vision of Absolute truth, no? So, today we want to talk about this. Many people are doing Kirtan of Ganesh, and Kirtan of Shiva, and Kirtan of Durga, and Kirtan of Krishna is also a there at the end. <laughs> people are doing because they believe the absolute truth is avyat, unmanifest, like an all-pervading knowledge. They believe the absolute truth has no form. But so that we can meditate on that formless, 
absolute truth accepts a temporary form called Ishwar, like Krishna, like Ram. So they say it doesn't matter which you choose to meditate on, it's all the same. But this is all illegal, this is all atheistic. In Bhagavad Gita, what does Krishna say? Yanti Deva Brata Deva. Clearly, Krishna says, those who worship the devas go to the devas. Then, those who worship the the Sanskrit, Pitra Yanti Pitta Brata. Those who worship the forefathers, like in Japan <laughs> and China, very strong worship of forefathers, right? Those who worship the forefathers, where they go? To the forefathers. Those who worship the devas, the demigods, go to the demigods. No. Bhute yante ni bhuteja, those who worship the ghosts, they go to the ghosts. But Krishna says, those who worship me, come to me. So Bhagavad Gita clearly describes, these all are not the same. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, we should not think that the manifest has come from the unmanifest. Rather, the unmanifest has come from the manifest, Krishna says. No? Understand, Jenny? So, carry, right? No, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> and many people think the absolute truth is impersonal, and from that have manifested Krishna and Ram and Shiva and Durga. So, you just choose anyone, it doesn't matter, because at the end you go to the unmanifest. But in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says completely the opposite. Abhyaktam vyaktam apatam manyate mam abhudeya. Krishna says. Those who consider first was the unmanifest, and I have come from that, Krishna says, abhudeya. No intelligence. <laughs> but the truth is the opposite. Where does the light come from? A film. Light also has a source. So we cannot say the absolute truth is just a light or an energy because all light and all energy has a source. All energy, all light has a cause. And what is the cause of all causes? That is the supreme, all attractive, all sweet, all merciful. 64 qualities of Krishna, that is him. So one should meditate upon him. They're from Gita. Krishna gave many, many instructions, but the essence of all instruction, that is two lines. <clears throat> what is that? Krishna says. Which is Always remember. Always remember. Manmana bhavaman bhatto madhyaji mam namaskuru. Krishna says these two lines. This is considered the essence of all Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says many things in Bhagavad Gita. But the final explanation, the final instruction is considered the most important. Like if I said, Jenny, here's 10 bucks, can you get me some sugar at Coles? And as you're going to Coles, I ring up, no, no, please don't bring sugar, bring honey. What will you bring? Honey. Honey, because that is the final instruction. So Krishna and Bhagavad Gita may say many, many things. But the final instruction that rules over all. And there he says, Manmana, Bhavamat, Bhatto, Madhyaji, Mam Namaskuru. Four instructions. Krishna is very kind. If you can't do this, do that. <laughs> if you can't even do that, then do this. And by God, if you can't even do that, <laughs> then at least do this. So therefore, Bhagavad Gita gives something for everyone on all levels. Therefore, he says the most Important instruction, manmana bhava manmana, manmana bhava, give your mind to me. Our problem is, we are trying very hard to forget this world and meditate on Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says again and again, when the, unruled, when the unruly mind goes away from the self, the super self, the super soul, again and again by abhyas, by practice and detachment, Control the mind, bring it back. And Krishna gives many examples, like the turtle. He can withdraw all his senses. The yogi can withdraw all his senses and fix them on them. So think of me. Perfected souls try to think of Krishna, but cannot, because mind is very restless. Mind is crazy. Therefore, we should think, we should understand there are two types of souls. 
the perfect and the non-perfect. <laughs> we are examples of the non-perfect souls. Because God, everything is possible and everything is in Him, He has the power to create both types of souls, the perfected souls and the imperfect souls. Because He is the source of everything. If He could only make perfected souls, that would be limiting. You know? So God has the power, Krishna has the power, to manifest the perfected souls, but also to manifest another type of souls, which are imperfect. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about this, I think, in the 15th chapter. Two ksaram, aksaram, evacha. Two type of souls, two type of purush. Do imam purusho loke, Krishna says. In this world, there's two type of souls, the perfect and the imperfect. Imperfect means us. Here we are in Cairns, tasting imperfection. Perfection is there, inherent in us, but we have chosen not to, we have chosen to forget that. We have chosen illusion, we have chosen forgetfulness. Therefore, Supreme Lord manifests the material world for the forgetful souls, those who want something apart from Him. But there is another type of souls, they are called the Nitkisiddhas, eternally perfected souls. We always forget Krishna. <laughs> there is never a time we have remembered him. But there is another type of souls they are called the Nitya Siddha. You can get another tattoo. Nitya Siddha. Eternally perfected souls. They never come to this world. They never forget Krishna. Always establishing their eternal relationship. Continuously serving him. Where they live, they live with the Supreme Lord in the divine abode. That is called Brahmadam, Vaikuntha, Golok, many names it has. They have perfect spiritual forms, just like Krishna. I met one Christian woman yesterday in near that lagoon, is it called? Yeah. And she explained, no, in heaven there's also a chicken and fish. I was saying, how could that be? Because there is no material body. There is no need for chicken and fish there. <laughs> Some people so much attached to matter, so much attached to gross enjoyment, they think it must be there also. If you tell them such a thing is not there, they cannot accept. I might tell one little story, it's a little bit of a... I hope it doesn't go too much away from the subject. There was a swan, a flock of swans that came to a pond. In that pond, there were many ducks. And some conversation started. The ducks asked the swans, where are you from? They say, we come from Man Sarova, divine lake in Himalaya. We come from Man Sarova. What do you eat there? We eat the stems of lotus, <laughs> the swans said. There is pure crystal water. We eat the stems of a lotus. Then the ducks said, well, here we eat worms and slugs. Worms, slugs, and snails. Then... <laughs> They asked the swans, do you eat worms like No, 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 we eat the stems of lotus. Where you live, Mansarov. Then the ducks, the swan said, come with us to Mansarov. And the duck said, in Mansarov, are there worms? <laughs> are there snails we can eat? They said, no. And the <laughs> duck said, then get lost. How could that be heaven if there's no snails or no slugs there? People so much attached to this gross body, so much attached to the enjoyment of the senses. You tell them there's a place where there's only one thing, service to Krishna, service to God. No, no, they say. We will not go, we will stay here. So the eternally perfected souls, they have perfect spiritual forms, just like Krishna. Just like Krishna. And they are the same as Krishna, how can you serve him? Like you see, the butler of the queen, he also speaks perfect English. What would you like of your majesty? There's no bogan butlers of the queen. <laughs> to serve the queen, you must be a little bit like the queen. So to serve Krishna, you have to be like him. So when scriptures say, the soul achieves oneness with the Supreme Lord, means what? In that sense, all perfection is also in you, just like in Krishna. But there's always a difference. You are the servant and he is the master. He is the enjoyer and you are the enjoyer. But apart from that, pretty much everything is the same there. So, they also have spiritual forms made of eternality, knowledge and bliss. We were telling these ladies last night. 
they have the feeling I am Krishna's mother, I am Krishna's beloved, I am Krishna's lover, I am Krishna's friend, I am Krishna's servant. These four moods are there. There is no old age, no disease, no birth, no creation, no time there. They have perfect spiritual forms made of love of Krishna. That is called rag atmik. Atma means soul. So rag atmik. They're soul bodies. See that they have. We have material bodies, but they have spiritual bodies. And their spiritual bodies are made of rag. Rag means love for Krishna. <laughs> they're made of love of Krishna. So they never, everything they do, all their, all their mind, their intelligence, their senses, their body, everything is for Krishna's pleasure, Krishna's service. So Krishna says, think of me always like them. And the best example they are called the gopis. Have you heard of them? They are considered the best servants of Krishna. Their spiritual forms attract the spiritual senses of Krishna. They, they always give him so much pleasure, so much happiness. They're all activities only for one cause, his pleasure, his enjoyment. So Krishna said, think of me like that. And Guru Mahesh said, how Guru Mahesh tells one story. We are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. We are performing sadhan bhajan. We are performing devotion in the stage of practice. Why? To achieve devotion in the stage of perfection. But devotion is common. Both the chanting of the holy names is there in the stage of practice. It's also there in the stage of perfection. Just like green mango and ripe mango. Same. Only one is mature, one is immature. So sadhan bhajan, this bhakti, this devotion to kirtan in the stage of practice, is the same as kirtan in the stage of perfection. But mood is completely different. You know? Like green mango, ripe avocado and green avocado. So after many lifetimes of practice, we may achieve a stage where we are transferred to where Krishna is doing his pastimes in another universe. Right? Because we are still not qualified to go to the kingdom of God. That's why Krishna, the avatar, comes to the material world. A different one universe after another. And there you can meet Krishna for the first time. So one young girl, she had now achieved the spiritual form appropriate for that type of relationship with Krishna. So she was married and she came to Vrindavan. That's where Krishna is born. That's where Krishna always lives. Vrindavanam paditija padamekam nagachati. Padra, Krishna never lives in Cairns. Where does he live? Vrindavan. Yeah. He never takes one step outside. No, Raj Vrindavan. He never takes one step outside. So, as she came to the house of her new husband, then she stepped out onto the dust, and just by touching the dust of Vrindavan. Have you been there, Terry, Vrindavan? No. Sell a kidney and come. Then what you went? You went nowhere. Missed everything. <laughs> All holy places only have some power, some connection with Brindavan. It's considered the topmost holy place. Come, we were inviting you. Come. Hopefully you won't have to celebrate. <laughs> That's why Krishna gave everyone two, right? <laughs> no one has excuse. I have no money. No. Everyone has a ticket there. <laughs> so as soon as she touched the dust of that place, because Krishna always lived there, that is the eternal abode of Krishna. Immediately, Krishna, 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 come to her tongue, automatically. The name of Krishna began dancing on her tongue. But who is Krishna? What is Krishna? She don't know, but this feeling comes. His day is eternal. And our day always changing. Therefore, Krishna's activities are called the Nitya Lila, the eternal activities of Krishna. So, what's God doing now? Terry. He also has his activities. Right? <laughs> that is called the Lila of Krishna. So, the Vedanta Sutra explains. No? What is that? Lokavati Lila Koivalya Parayojanam. The Vedanta Sutra says, Your goal is to enter 
those pastimes of Krishna, to serve in those pastimes. So every morning Krishna also wakes up. He also brushes his teeth. He also goes for milky. He goes some wrestling, some exercise before breakfast. Then all his servants wash him, comb his hair, new dress, he goes for breakfast. This is all described in the scriptures, the eternal activities of the Supreme Lord. I remember when I first met the Hare Krishnas, one man said to me, what's, going, what's God doing now? I said, that's stupid, how could anyone know that? He said, no, it's there in the scriptures. At that time I could not conceive of such a thing. What? The activities of God are in the scriptures, but it's there, clear description. In the Bible, you cannot find any description of God's form. What does he look like? No description. His name, his form, what's he doing there? There was no idea. That's why, if you read those scriptures, you can have no clear conception what is service to God, what is love of God, because you have no idea what he looks like or what he's doing, right? Imagine Terry said, you want to marry, marry my brother? What would you say? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good choice. No, why? Probably you're married anyway, but don't know anything about him. How can we love the Supreme Lord if we have no idea of his name, his form, his qualities, or his activities? So we should not be fanatics blindly following something just because we are born in a particular tradition. For example, I go to the 7-Eleven to buy bread, but bread is not there. Should I fast, or should I go to another place where I can buy bread? The goal is not some particular religion. The goal is love of God. If I'm intelligent, if I cannot find any helpful descriptions in this particular scripture, then I, should I stick to that? Or should I use my intelligence and go to another scripture where it's described more clearly? Anyway. So, she started Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And every morning Krishna goes for cow grazing. That's his activity. So handsome at that time. The gopi said, Aksham Phantam Phalamidam Nappadam Vidam. Oh Saki, those eyes which have not seen the beauty of Krishna when he goes early in the morning for cow grazing, those eyes are useless like the eyes of a peacock feather. <laughs> those ears which have not heard the sound of cannot hear anything. So that is perfection of the eyes to see. So in the morning, everyone runs to see Krishna as he goes, taking all the millions of cows, cow grazing. All the trees, because in the spiritual world, everything has consciousness, not like this one. Here, everything is dead. The table, the mic stand, the chair, everything is made of matter. But in the spiritual world, there is no matter. Everything is consciousness. A new record for being late. <laughs> Only half a plate shall be given. <laughs> now they won't understand anything. Anyway, try to follow as best you can. So, all the insects, all the birds, all their spiritual bodies are made of love of Krishna. The trees, the grass, everything. So everyone runs to see him at that time. So this young gopi, she has no experience. Why everyone's running? What's going on? So she also go there. But mother-in-law said, no, no, don't go. You stay here. Why? She says, everyone is going. Why can I not go? Then the mother-in-law says, there's a black snake there. <laughs> Krishna means black. <laughs> there's a black snake there. If he bites you, that poison will go and you'll finish your life forever. So don't go. Then the girl said, the young girl, when you are going, she said, we have immunity that they are poisoned, no? because we are drinking every day. But you are young, so they locked you in the house. You cannot go. So she's trying very eagerly. This is called Purvarag. Attachment to Krishna, but not met yet. Like, have you been to Hawaii, Terry? No. Oh, would you like to go? Yes. Why? Because I've heard so good things about it. If I gave you a free ticket to Afghanistan, would you take it? Probably. Iraq? Yes. Syria? Yes. Come on. There must be yes. Sudan? There you go. Yeah, I'm good. No, come on. Ukraine? Ukraine? Yes. Generally, a normal person would not accept. 
because heard bad things about them. Maybe dangerous, obviously. We have never been to Hawaii, but we hear good things, therefore we have some greed, some desire. So we have not met Krishna, but heard things about him. And that attachment is called Purvara. Not met, not seen, but have feelings. So this is called Purvara. So you have so much desire. How I can see Krishna? What is Krishna? How I can see? But she cannot go because mother-in-law has locked the door. Um, and 10 push-ups for being led. <laughs> no, it's, it's take a seat. Thank you for coming. What's your name? James. So, anyone have so much desire to meet Krishna, then Krishna also have attraction to that person. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Jeta Tamam Prapadyanam Bhajaham. I reciprocate according to your surrender to me. So someone had too much desire to see Krishna, Krishna also feel too much attachment to that person. So how to meet because everyone is watching? How some excuse should be there? So one calf, small calf, understanding what Krishna wants, then he ran away from the herd. And Krishna, because Gopal means coward boy, he following behind that calf, so Krishna went right in front of that lady, that young lady, and with his flute, he touched her under, with his hand, sorry, he touched her under the chin like this. He stand in his threefold bending form. Shamam Tribanga Lalitam Niyatam Prakasham Govinda Mari Purushum Tamaham Bajam. Lord Brahma said, I worship that supreme Cupid, <laughs> more attractive than thousands and millions of Cupids who always stand in a threefold bending form playing his flute. Kara, many, many verses are there describing the sweetness of that form of Krishna. So Krishna stole her heart and went cow raising. Like Gurudev said, we are trying to give our mind to Krishna. That is one stage of devotion. But another stage is when Krishna steals your heart and you cannot forget him. <laughs> that is a completely different stage of devotion. No? That you see in the prayers of high class devotees like Radharani, they say, this remembrance of Krishna gives so much pain. Means, like you drink boiling hot sugar cane juice, how it tastes, so sweet. But so sweet, the more you drink, but it, the more you drink, the more it burns. But it's so sweet, you cannot give it up. That is Krishna. So that remembrance of Krishna is so sweet. But when you cannot get him, how much you burn inside. So some devotee, they say, look, Purnamasi, Yoga Maya, she says, just see the yogis try very hard in meditation, in samadhi, to take their mind away from this world and fix their minds on the toenails of Krishna. Yadyapi samadhishu vidyapi pasyati nantava nakagamarichim idamni ichamni nesamya tavachuti tavat kripad butavichim. Vidichi means Brahma, Lord Brahma. Lord Brahman Samadhi is trying very hard to fix his mind on the toenails of Krishna, but cannot, because that love is not there. No? But those who have love for Krishna are trying very hard to forget Krishna and remember something else, but they cannot, no? because Krishna has stolen the mind, manmana. No? So when all the mother-in-law and sister-in-law, they came back, they saw this gopi like a ghost, because her mind is gone. Krishna has taken her heart taken her mind to the forest. Therefore they think, oh no, we told you not to look. The snake has bitten you, we gave you warning, but you're not listening, you think you know more than us. Now look at your situation. So quickly, quickly engage her in some service. Get her busy so her mind can forget Krishna, she can again come to her household duties. So they give her, you churn this yoga, then you grind this mustard seed. But she have no mind. So what she's doing? She churning the mustard seed. Opposite. So horrible sound is coming. Then the goat mother in law, what are you doing? Oh no. Quickly. So they gave her some pot, one pot, two pot, three pot, some rope, a bucket, one baby. Go, bring some water for cooking. So she went to the well, but she had no mind. So the rope, instead of putting the rope around the bucket, putting the bucket in the well and taking up the water. She began putting the rope around the neck of the baby <laughs> because no mind. 
Then other gopis were there luckily. What are you doing, crazy woman? They were looking at her. She seems completely insane. So one person said, it looks like she's been haunted by a ghost. In the Hindi they say boot, boot means ghost. She has been captured by a ghost, but another gopis who knew more than her, they said, no, no, this is no boot, this is Nanda Kisut, one name of Krishna. <laughs> her mind has not been captured by a ghost, her mind has been captured by Krishna. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, think of me like that. This type of bhav, this type of mood, this type of absorption. In Arjuna, who is listening to Bhagavad Gita, he may say, come on Krishna. I am not that level to always remember you like that. That is not my power. I cannot love you like the gopis who always remember you 24 hours. So that type of love is not possible for me. So Krishna said, okay Arjuna, if you cannot do this, give your mind to me, then practice giving your mind to me. Manmana, bhav. Bhav means practice. You know, practice remembering Krishna. That's what we are doing. We are not perfected souls, but we want to achieve perfection. How? By remembering Krishna. And all scriptures say, Yena, Tena, Prakarena, Mana, Krishna, Nasevya. Anyhow, remember Krishna. Yena, Tena means any way, by any means. Always your smart of your Satata Vishnu. Always remember the feet of Krishna. Always remember Krishna. And never forget him. <laughs> These are the only two rules and regulations of the scriptures. Always remember him and never forget him. And whatever else you may find in the scriptures, these are just servants of these two principles. Why scripture says don't eat meat? Why? Because if you eat meat, your mind will become contaminated by ignorance. Then how do you remember Krishna? Scripture says don't chase after, like, you know, don't drink alcohol. Why? If you drink alcohol, why? You forget Krishna. <laughs> Why scriptures say wake up early and chant the holy name, then you can remember him? No. So many people become, oh, why does spiritual life have so many rules and regulations? But all these rules and regulations, which are like an ocean, are just to help you with these two ideas. Always remember Krishna, never forget him. No. So, practice remembering. So Guru Mahārāj gives, what's an example of a sadak? Sadak means who's practicing to remember Krishna who's trying to remember Krishna. So that is called sadak. Guru Mahārāj said, what's the example of a sadak? The example is Bilva Mangal. Bilva Mangal. Who qualified to see Krishna but still have some obstacles. Still some obstacle. No? That is called sadak. So Bilva Mangal is a famous example of how, much, how we should have greed to attain Krishna. Greed. Greed is not a bad thing. No? Without greed, no one would have come here tonight. What? James is your name, right? Yeah. Right. James probably had many other things planned for Friday night, right? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Thanks, okay, yeah. But friends calling, come here, do this, do this, do this. But somehow you had more, no, no, I want to go for the kitten. So the greed brought you here. <laughs> you thought, anyway, I'll get more here than I will doing anything else. So greed is not bad, but you have greed for some women or money or power, that would not give any happiness. But greed for Krishna, <laughs> this will give happiness. So Rupa Goswami says, no? This tat tat bhavadi maduja shuta nandira pekshate na shastram sta na yuktam sta bhav lokvat pati lakshma. What is the symptom of someone who has greed for Krishna? What scripture say or doesn't say, he don't care. He don't care for that. But he have greed, hearing of Krishna's sweetness. Krishna's sweetness, Krishna's affection for the devotee. Who hears this and develops attachment, they give up everything else. That is a symptom of someone in whose heart greed for Krishna has awoken. That is called sadak. So Bilva Mangal is the example. No? I'll try not to speak too long, but this is what cannot shorten these things. No? So Bilva Mangal. He, he lived 900 years in Vrindavan before, of course, not this age, that is previous age. So he was born in a Brahminical family, a high class, aristocratic family in South India. But he had fallen in love with one prostitute. <laughs> that 
that prostitute's name was Chintamani. So she was also a very high class lady, but some circumstance, I will not tell the previous life. There's a previous life of both prostitute and Bilbo Mango. Maybe I should tell it. Anyway, not so important. Yeah. So Bilbo Mango is from a very aristocratic and religious family that is called Brahminical family. But his heart had been captured by this lady. Her name was Chintana. The problem is, even if we fall into illusion, like we love some woman, but still everyone's like looking. <laughs> we cannot, even in illusion, we cannot fix our mind on one thing. That is the problem. We're still looking here and there. But Bilbo Mango was not like that. He had so much one-pointed affection for this lady. So much so that on the day of his father's funeral, he could not attend the funeral because he was so much restless to meet this lady. Imagine a son not going to his father's funeral. Even in Australia, everyone will criticize that person. Everyone. Everyone. But Bilbo Mango will not care because he has so much love for this woman. He not went to his father's funeral and heavy rain was that day. How to cross the river? Because big flood was there. So he was so much mad to meet this woman. He saw one dead body on the, on the side of the river. Anyone seen a dead body in the water? Yeah. They become like an inner tube. So Bilbo Mango used her like a surfboard. <laughs> Because body is floating, he used that to cross the river. Who will do like that? Only someone have this. You can imagine how much affection he had for this woman. We see a dead body, we're like, oh my God. But Bill Romano was saying, no, this will help me. <laughs> he crossed on the dead body. Then he came to Chitamni's door. He was beating, but no one could hear because heavy rain, heavy thunder. How to climb the wall? There was a snake, a python. So he grabbed hold of that python and pulled himself up. Imagine. And he came to the door and fell unconscious. Chintamani heard some sound. She saw Bilbo Mango, you could imagine, completely soaking, wet, covered in mud. She knew today was her fa his father's funeral. She so asked, she knew the river was in flood. How you came here? Then he described. Then she strongly chastised him. You fool. If you had 1% of the attachment that you have for me, this bag of stool and urine, what is this body? Everyone's so mad for boyfriend and girlfriend. What is boyfriend and girlfriend? A bag of stool. Some mustache, some hair. <laughs> you put it in the microwave, 36.6 degrees. That's called husband, that's called wife. No, but from all the gates of the body, what things come from the, the beautiful Miss Universe, right? Wax from the ears, mucus, saliva, <laughs> stool, urine. She not bath after two, three days, then anyone will keep known, everyone will be repulsed. That is the material body. So she said, you are so foolish. You have so much attachment to this material body of stool and urine. If you had developed a little bit of attachment for Krishna, your life would have been perfect. So Bhiva Mango, last life, he was practicing spiritual life. Some mistake he made, some offense. But her words were like a spear. When her words entered his heart, then his previous life spiritual attachment that awoke by her words. Then she, he realized what she's saying, that is the complete fact. Immediately he renounced everything. And, that, and he said, I am going to Vrindavan, the holy place where Krishna lives. We are inviting everyone to come for Brindavan. Have you been so? What's your name? Dale. Dale, come. Kidney or no kidney? <laughs> that is a city of 20,000 temples. Here in Cairns, if you rare like this and chant Hare Krishna or do Kirtan, everyone will think you're mad. But in Brindavan, if you do not have Tilak, do not chant Hare Krishna, everyone will know this guy is mad. <laughs> so you are mad. Such a place is Brindavan. Because everyone there remember Krishna. Everyone there chants his names. Everyone. So, I will go Vrindavan. So he began to walk. But he still, because of his past life habit, he still had lust in his heart. That is not completely gone. So, 
as he is walking towards Vrindavan, then he came to one village, one young lady was taking bath. And in India they take bath outside with all their clothes. So he could see the form of her body on the wet side. Again, that lust which was there, again awoken him. He became bewildered. He began following that young lady home. So he came right to her door. The young lady went inside and went to her husband. One sadhu, one saintly person, one mendicant has followed me home. And husband was very simple. Oh, go and ask him, how can we serve him? No. How can we serve a saintly person? So this young lady went, yes, Maharaj, how can I please you? What do you want from us? And what did he want? <laughs> no mention. But when that word came from her mouth, oh, great saintly person, how can we serve him? Then his, again, his consciousness came back. What I'm doing? He became shameful. What I'm doing? I took the dress of renunciant, but again I'm doing the same thing. Shame on me. He became very angry with himself. So he said to the lady, give me your hairpins. Then the lady thought maybe he have some thorn in his foot. He will take it out by the hairpin. So she gave her hairpins because husband said, whatever he wants, give him. So she gave. He said, good woman, thorn is not in my foot. Thorn is in my heart. Is lust. So they say, no bamboo, no fire. <laughs> no bamboo, no flute, they say in Hindi. No eyes, no attachment to material form. So he plucked out his eyes. Imagine. He had that much attachment to Krishna. Will you, Dale, pluck out your eyes? So this is proof. He'd reached the stage of Bhav Bhakti. High, he'd reached a high stage of devotion, but some impediment, some mistake, some fault from previous action. So, he plucked out his eyes. Then, now he's blind, how will he go to Vrindavan? Because he cannot see. So, Krishna, had, Krishna was so full of compassion, he came as a small boy. Oh, Baba, where are you going? I'm going to Vrindavan. That small boy said, I'm also going, come with me. Who is that small boy? Krishna. Take hold of my stick. Krishna always had one cow stick. One flute, one cow stick, one black blanket, yellow cloth, peacock feather. Krishna had these things only for Krishna. So take my stick. The Bhibhu Mangu grabbed the stick of Krishna and Krishna's stick also like Krishna, completely spiritual. And Krishna holding the stick. Then Bhibhu Mangu having so much realization, the sweetness of Krishna's form, his name, his all qualities, his all activities, like a movie, Guru Mahārāj said. On the screen of the heart, all Krishna's name, form, qualities coming like a flow, constant flow. He's, this is samādhi, to see all these things directly face to face. This is called samādhi, bhakti samādhi. So Bhīva Mangal has so many realizations. You know, and he's speaking poetry. <laughs> So these all verses Bilva Mangal spoke, this became one book, Krishna Karunamrita. Because he's putting, Bilva Mangal is putting nectar into the ears of Krishna. <laughs> Krishna hearing all this, too much happened. So Bil Krishna took Bilva Mangal to Vrindavan and he said, Oh Baba, we have come to Vrindavan. Then Bilva Mangal said, How can I come 2,000 miles in just one or two days? And he's thinking, which small boy is alone walking to Vrindavan in the, from South India? Why are I having so many realizations of Krishna's name, form, qualities, and activities? Well, how possible? Then you understand this small boy is Krishna, so Bilbo Mangal grabbed his hand like this. But because Bilbo Mangal is not perfected devotee, he still has some obstacle, some fault. Therefore, when he grabbed Krishna's hand, Krishna pulled his hand away. Because Bilva Mangal cannot control Krishna by his love. He cannot control Krishna. He can catch Krishna's hand but not hold him because his devotion is not perfect. Krishna is controlled by pure bhakti, pure devotion. But Bilva Mangal is not perfectly pure. So he can catch Krishna's hand but not hold him. So Krishna pulled his hand out. Therefore, you hear in Vrindavan stories of Madhya Soda binding Krishna. Krishna could not escape from that because her love is perfect love, prema bhakti. But Bilva Mangal is not that stage. So Krishna pulled his hand, then Bilva Mangal laughed. 
I am an old man. It's true. And you are a young boy. You can pull from my hand, but you cannot pull yourself from my heart. I will bind you there. So Bhuva Mangal then, he stayed 900 years in Vrindavan. And he's, like we say, Samadhi, his burial place there you can visit when you come. So we should practice with this type of absorption, this type of determination. So Krishna says, Manmana, think of me like that. Arjuna says, I can. Then remember me like this, Shravan kid. Hear and chant my name with attachment like Bilba Mangal. Then Arjuna may say, Krishna, I am on the middle of a battlefield. I cannot do like that also. I am not that standard. So Krishna says, okay, if you cannot do that, so much attachment to chant my kirtan. You have not so much to shravan kirtan, chanting and hearing. You do not have that type of attachment. Okay, then worship me in the temple, Archie. So Archana is for those persons who have not so much taste in hearing about Krishna or speaking about Krishna. But they can give $10 in the donation box. <laughs> they can bring some flowers to the temple. They can clean the temple. They can do this type of service. And by doing this type of service to Krishna, heart is purified and attachment comes for hearing and chanting his names. Kirtan. So Archana is a bit for the like less qualified person, generally. Of course, exception may be there. The general rule is like that. So, Guru Mahal says worship like what we are practicing. No? So in temple life, if you come to the ashram, you'll see there is always the deity of Krishna. And devotees from morning till evening, what they're doing? Cleaning, cooking, going to the market, bringing flowers. <laughs> doing something, cleaning, polishing, something, some <laughs> service related to Krishna. So worship me, Krishna says, Madhyaji, worship me. How? Radhvidodini, stay awake. <laughs> so Guru Mahesh tells once, Guru Mahesh said he had his own experience, one man he knew. Our Guru Dev lived 50 years in Mathura, holy city of Mathura, Vrindavan. So Guru Dev said there was one man there, and he was serving the deity form of Krishna. Many people not believe in deity. What's your name, madam? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Many people not believe in the deity form of the Supreme Lord. Like you go in the mosque, you go in the synagogue, you go in the church, there is no form of God. No? This give deviation, this give material bondage. But the problem is we only have material senses. How we can develop attachment to the transcendental Supreme Lord as long as we have a material mind and material sense? It's not possible because God is transcendental. Transcendental means beyond the senses and beyond the mind. So Krishna appear in the deity form. Like you go to any temple, you'll see the deity made of wood, seven wood, metal, paint, jewels, clay, the mind, and one other I cannot remember. These are material, these are made of material elements. But Krishna is so powerful, he still has the power to appear in this form without becoming material. So all scriptures say the deity form is not material, even though it appears to be made of matter. How is it possible? The Supreme Lord's potency, which makes the impossible possible, easily accomplishes everything. So the deity form is realized according to a qualification. If you're a complete materialist, <laughs> how do you see Krishna in the temple? As matter. If you're a middle class devotee, Madhya Madhikari, you will perceive the deity he has. He's happy with me. He's not happy with me. You'll feel. <laughs> You'll feel. Oh, he liked my offering. He liked my singing. You're not so much happy with me today. <laughs> You'll have these feelings. But the highest level of devotee, Krishna directly speaks with him. The deity directly speaks with him. Directly eats the offering. And anyway, hundreds of stories are there in the scriptures. So 
One man, Guru has said, he lived in Mathura. He had common faith, you know, but he not so much knowledge of different mantras. And, but in a very simple way, he was worshipping with great determination. Every morning, he would go to the holy river of Yamuna, take bath, and bring a pot of water to worship Krishna in his little home temple. And he was doing this service for 20 years without break. No, he not missed one day. With great determination. Not like us, headache or tomorrow. So with great determination, he was doing like this regular work. Then one morning, heavy storm was there. And that time people had no watches. What's the time? They could look at the stars and understand. So this man woke up. He could not see the stars because heavy storm was there. Then he went to take bath and bring his pot of water. But he became lost because so heavy rain was there. So he was thinking, how can I get home? How will I do my service? 20 years I not missed one day. He became lost. He could not find the way. All the streets were flooded, pouring rain. So he became in great anxiety. He began to weep. How will I do my service? Oh, Krishna, help me. Then again, <laughs> one small boy came with a bag on his head and a lantern. Oh, Baba, where are you going? Oh. I have to do my worship. Where you live? Such and such address. The small boy said, come with me, I'm going that direction. <laughs> and Gurudev said this from his own experience. He spoke to one man like this in Mathura. So this boy had the lantern and the man followed him, followed him, followed him. And he came to his house. Oh, Baba, this is your house. Oh, yes, it is. Then the man went inside. He began thinking, how is it possible such a small child is wandering in such a storm? He turned around. The child was gone. And he began weeping. Who is that? His Krishna in his altar, his deity, had come out to bring him for his worship. Because he had that much attachment. So Gurudev says, worship me. How? <coughs> like that. No. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, before he came to America and made the Hare Krishna movement, he was living in one temple called Radha Damada. He read, someone gave him one room there. And he said, in that room was one old lady. And every morning, three o'clock, she would go, take bath and bring a pot of special holy water, the Yamuna, every day for service. And she never missed. And he said, just for doing that service every day, then Krishna took her. At the time of death, Krishna gave her all perfection. Because she's only doing a small service, but she never missed, never dropped. So finally, think of me like that, I cannot do then hear and chant like this, I cannot do. No. Then worship me, I do this. I cannot do, I'm in the middle of a war. Then Krishna said, if you cannot do that, just bow to me. Tam nam namaskur, bow. No. Bow your head, that is called pranam. No, pranam. When we see each other, they say namaste, right? In India, namaste, pranam. What is the meaning? No. Namaste, namaha. Pranam. No? When we bow to Krishna, what, what do we think? Namaha. This body, this mind, this senses, this is, and everything connected with the body is not mine, this is yours. No, that is the feeling. Buddha says if we bow to the Lord with the, without this feeling, then doing bowing, and this is like doing push ups. <laughs> so, if one bows even one time to Krishna with full surrender, then the scripture says that person never sees the womb of a mother. Again, such is the power. Just one time, bow to Krishna from core of the heart. So why I'm speaking all these things, Kirtan should have some goal. No? And the name of Krishna fulfills all desires. So, Because we are not associating with the devotees of the Lord, no, then we don't know what to desire. Therefore, we're desiring small things. Oh, I become free from disease. No? May my granny become free from disease. Or may I get a good wife. May I have some good children. May I become even free from birth and death. But these are all insignificant goals. No? When Krishna can give himself, then why would you ask for anything else? So, Nam Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasavigraha Puna Sula Nityamukta Abhinatva Namina. The name of Krishna is Krishna. Krishna, one sound incarnation. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. 
This is sound incarnation of Krishna. Right? Mantra. And by doing mantra, your soul will become delivered from the mind. That is mantra. Okay? So Nama Chintamani Krishna, this sound is fully conscious. It's Krishna himself. We should not think because the name comes from the material tongue and lips and voice box, then the name is also material. All scripture says that. Nam Chintamani Krishna. And this Krishna's name is Chintamani. Whatever you want, it gives you. So we should be careful not to desire anything insignificant. Otherwise, Krishna will cheat you and give it to you. <laughs> and he will be remain denied the real treasure, which is his pure love and his pure affection. So main thing when we do kirtan, the main thing, not just the sound or the instruments, but the main thing, the intention, why we are singing, what we want. So if that intention is only to please him, right Bhadra? If we're doing kirtan just to please him for his service, for his happiness, then this kirtan will attract Krishna. And Krishna will say, what do you want? <laughs> I say, I want nothing, I only want you. I do not want your things, Krishna. I want you. So this little bit the goal of Kirtan. So the real goal of Kirtan, that is Krishna's eternal service, eternal relationship with him. And if we desire anything else, that is just one type of self-deception. Are there any questions from the people? No? Didn't care. Hare Krishna. So, like our Gurudev, uh, Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur, he would often make the worst person sing. <laughs> Who have the worst voice, he would make him sing, like in the big festivals. He said, to teach everyone, we are not interested in the sound of the instruments, so we are not interested in pleasing the senses of the audience. We are interested in pleasing the senses of Krishna. So sometimes he would do like that. The worst singer, he would make <laughs> him sing to teach this kirtan is not for our entertainment, for our enjoyment. That really, that is for the enjoyment, the entertainment of Krishna. Anyway, Hare Krishna. So there's some book. Please take a little book. A good lecture goes in one ear and out of the ear. Anyway, the book is always with us. We'll be here in Cairns seven days. We'll be doing little house programs in our house. So if you want to come, then please take advantage of it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, this one's not working. Oh, it's going to the volume. Hare Krishna.
one to one, we're doing kirtan, just like this, just sitting down. If you want to come tomorrow and join, it's nice to do the explanation. Explanation. Lagoon, lagoon. Oh, lagoon. It's not lagoon. It's anyone. That's the Okay. <laughs> Stay for some prasad? Yes, we put down um, a, a simple Hare Krishna face. Um, You're going to do a sit up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll just set up the, the dinner. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>